Okay, so today we're going to talk a bit about the event handler procedure. Um, we've been seeing it all this time, and there it is. So I drew a big red arrow and I'm pointing to this is a click event and it handles button one dot click. So what is that handler? Um, well, um, it handles the event. That's why it's called the handler. So if it's a if it's a mouse click, um, then it's going to be well which which object on the form is it? Um, and it turns out that you can actually make one click event that handles more than one button. Okay, so if each button is essentially going to be doing the same thing, it's just a different button, you can actually add more um, objects to the handler. Okay, if you're going to do that, um, we often have to declare um, the sender. So the sender is the object that triggered the event. Okay, so we're going to be doing this demo. Um, I have all these different buttons, and they basically do the same thing. It's, it's for a code, and you click on it, and you know the one puts a one in, a two, the two puts a two in. It's essentially the same thing, right? The only thing that changes is the number. So the sender would be if I clicked on this one. Well, now the sender is that button. If I click on this one, well, the sender is this button. But it's basically the same event. Okay. Um, let's see. So we are basically going to be doing this. We're going to be handling more than one click event at a time. So in order to do that, um, we just have to add the event name separated by commas after the handles keyword. So that's step one. So here's a, a quick example. I'm going to zoom in a touch. So this is a topping click. We'll generally change the name here to make it more general. Um, but you'll notice it handles three different click events, so three different um, objects. Um, right here. This dim check selected topping as checkbox becomes the sender. This is me declaring sort of a general variable um, for the sender. So because I don't know which one it's going to be. Okay, so I'm just going to say, hey VB, um, you'll know which one it is, but I'm just going to call it um, check selected topping. So when I do my if statement, when I'm looking at the check property, it's going to be the check property of the sender, and the sender could be either one of these three things. Okay, so if you do those two steps, you should be able to create um, click events that can handle more than one sender. So let's go ahead and make this design view. All right, so this is a very involved one. Um, so I'll give you a moment to try that out. Now that you got your design view done, um, we're going to need to update something called the tag property for each button. So I'm going to start with zero, and I've already done this. If you click on properties, um, you're going to scroll down, find the tag property. Um, so this is so we can identify um, each button individually by looking at the tag property. So in this case, I'm going to put a zero in for zero. And if I go over to my button one, um, the tag is going to be one, so on and so forth. So the tag for button two is going to be two. And we're going to be using that in the, in the code window. Okay, so you need to have zero to nine in the tag properties for each appropriate button. Okay, so we're going to switch over to uh, the code window. Um, I've already done some work here. So I got uh, my temp code, which is going to be the user code. And then I got my master code um, as this, 62498. That's the code that we're going to be checking the user code against and giving them a message. So I've gone and made a click event for button enter. Um, so if the temp code is equal to the code, we're going to say that they disable the alarm system. Um, otherwise, we're going to say that they entered the incorrect code. I'm just going to scroll over. So you can see everything I got. I got a title and um, just changed it so there's just one button, an OK button, in the message box show. So you can pause the video there if you like, and you can type that out. And uh, now we're going to go work on the uh, button click. So you can go ahead, insert a button click for any particular button, and then you're going to modify it. So I just changed it to button underscore click instead of having a number there. Um, and then I use the line continuation character here for the handles. And what we're going to do first is we're going to add all the buttons here. Okay, so we're going to type it out. We need this to handle all our buttons. Um, so what I might do is I'm going to be a little lazy. I'm going to copy and paste right here. And I'm going to just change the numbers. I'm going to change that to a 4 and a 5. Be very careful not to... Uh, miss any, just doing the line continuation character again. Then we're going to do button six and seven. It's not liking that. I think I need a comma here. There we go. So don't, don't forget that comma. And then button eight and button nine. And I believe that is all the, 
I guess we don't need the line continuation character. We'll see what happens. Okay, so first thing we need to do is declare the sender. Okay, so back in our notes, we saw that we just go dim, and then we need to come up with a generic name. So the sender is going to, we know it's going to be a button. So I'm just going to call it current button, and then we're going to say as the object type. So the object type is a button, and then we'll make it become the sender. So I'm going to say dim current button as button becomes the sender. So that's telling VB, hey, um, I don't know which button triggered this event, but I'm going to call it curtain button. As soon as you know who the sender is, you know, you're going to use button three or button two or button eight, whoever the, the sender is. What we need to do is we need to add the value of the button to the code. Okay, this is what we are using the tag property for. Right, so the tag property, remember, has the actual, if it's button zero, it has the value zero, or the string zero. Okay, so this is actually going to end up being pretty simple. So we're going to take our temp code, and we're going to add to it our current buttons tag property. And that's it. And those are both strings, so that's going to work fine. Um, so it really takes out a bunch of duplicate code. Like if I didn't know how to use... Um, the handle, the event handler properly, I would need to basically be doing this in a bunch of different click events. So for each button, I would need to have this code in each button. But now I can make the one click event that just does all of it for me. Now I am going to cheat, and um, I do have a label on the form um, where I can see what my temp code is. That's just for debugging. So I'm just going to write update label for debugging. Uh, it's completely unnecessary. Uh, at this point, the program would work. Um, but I'm just doing this to maybe have some good habits forming. So we'll be able to see your temp code as we click. Um, so that's all you need. We're going to run it now. And here it is. So if I hit a 5, you'll see that this is my cheat code label. So I can see that I hit a 5, a 9, an 8. And I've hit enter. It says it's the incorrect code. Um, I think I might I have to restart it. I didn't make it so that it just, <laughs> um, so I believe it's what, 62948, let me check, 62498, oh, what am I doing, I need to go 62498, hit enter, and it says congrats, you've turned off the alarm system, catch you next time.